I am uh, working in the Perio Foundation as a community office, officer for learning and for the Learning Analytics Initiative. Uh, within a national body called SURF, in a special interest group for learning analytics, I'm co-chair with uh, the other co-chair being Hendrik Dreschler. And at the University of Amsterdam, I'm in an innovation work group, which is supposed to bring new services to the university. What are the barriers the learning analytics community has overcome? So you've seen a lot more social diffusion, and I think the trick to avoiding uh, doing the same stuff is to actually understand what other people are doing. And you're starting to see works uh, like hackathons be, where uh, things are actually being built uh, uh, occurring across events. Uh, for example, LACE have been running a series of ethics and privacy workshops which are impacting on national policy, and there's soon to be one uh, in April by the European Parliament which might influence uh, European policy and so those sort of events are becoming more and more regular and having more and more impact. Okay, the last question is where you see learning analytics future in five years time? So I think it should be ubiquitous so uh, the conversation about when personal learning environments going to emerge into the mainstream uh, will be over hopefully in five years time. Uh, learning analytics will, uh, people with learning analytics skills will be diffused into universities in a more uh, instinctive way. And then the conversation will move on to things that are a little less about learning analytics and more about uh, the, uh, and data centralism and gaining control of your data and the privacy aspects and more in terms of uh, the importance of uh, adaptive content, uh, cognitive tutors, and all the things that students don't know they need but will uh, want to have once they're deployed at large scale.